24 hours later and the dries to the touch in 35 minutes, fully cured in two hours epoxy, is still tacky. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community. I finally got the shepherd's axe done. Come on and I'll show you what I did to get it all finished up to this point. I think the first thing I want to do with this axe at this point is make the little straps that are going to strap this to the handle. These are going to go through the head and engage in that little slot I filed in there the other day. And hopefully the handle will trap them in side to side so they can't slide up and down. Then they'll get kind of peened into that slot, filed flush on the top, I hope and some pins through here so it's all attached. And that should really secure the handle a lot better than just the usual wedge system. We're gonna find out, I've never done this before, so you're learning right along with me. I've already made one of these. My original thought was to heat the strap up and then put the drift in and just drift it to form, but it cools off so fast. This is eighth by half inch material. The ax head's cold, the drift is cold, and it was just not really working. So I'm finding that it's easier to kind of form these freehand at the anvil and test fit them and just keep working with it. And then I should end up with something that we can use in the long run. But I've got one done. Now let's just do the other one. I'm going to be working in the induction forge today just because this is a small thing, doesn't need a lot of heat. Heats up real quick in the induction forge and we can just get this done pretty quickly. I'm going to go ahead and lightly swedge the strap so that it better fits the profile on the handle. I'm also going to go ahead and put my touch mark on the strap because I forgot to put it on the axe head the other day when we were working on that. This has a little twist in it, so I'll see if I can straighten that out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let this cool, then we'll do a test fit up and see what we think. Then I'm gonna to need to drill some holes in them so I can cross pin them, and I wanna make sure the holes line up from one strap to the other instead of trying to drill it after they're assembled. And probably a little filing just to clean things up some. Well, this looks like it's working about as well as I expected. Of course, like I said, I don't really have a firm plan. I'm making it up as I go along. So I don't know what I was really expecting, but I think this is gonna do the trick. As you can see, the straps stick out and kind of go over those little notches that I filed in there, and the handle will trap those in. So this won't be able to come off the handle if the straps are pinned to the handle. So even with this loose on there, that can't come off because I've got a hold of the straps. And that's the real idea. It might get a little loose and wobbly, but it should never fall out. Hopefully it won't get loose and wobbly. It's just an extra bit of insurance. So the next thing to do is just clean these up a little bit, figure out what the lineup is from side to side, and then drill the holes for the cross pins. I think I'll drill those for 3 16 pins and put some 3 16 rivets in there. And just Two of them, I think, is really all I'm going to need. This is not super high stress. I'm not hanging from this like you would an ice axe or something.
I put some rivets in the hole to make sure that the holes stay lined up. And then I can file the ends even. For the butt end of the shaft, I want to make a little ferrule and probably a spike for this. I thought about something with a threaded insert so you could change the spike for a rubber tip if you're going to use it inside. So this will definitely be an outdoor tool. So I'm just going to go with the spike on this one. For the ferrule, I have a piece of tubing. First thing I want to do is put a little bit of a taper in this and then I want to make it oval and I'll make the handle in match this. So once I've got this done, I'll work the handle down to fit. Working in a V-block helps prevent crushing the tube as you forge that taper. Okay, I think that's what I want. I'm going to let that cool, then I'll cut it off, and then I'll make it over. This piece of half inch square bar will be my spike, so for now it's going to be a good way to just hold on to this so I can heat it up in the induction forge and make an oval out of it. Be really gentle with this, it'd be super easy to crush this. Next I'm going to put the same drift I used for the eye in here so I get a nice clean oval that matches the same shape as the eye.
And that should do it for that. Now let's go ahead and forge a spike. That's the easy part. I'll go ahead and cut this off and then I'll round up the part that's going to glue into the handle. That should do it for all the component parts. I think I'll do a little bit of filing, grinding, make sure these are all ready to go so that we can work on the handle and get everything put together. But first, I would like to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of classes to choose from. Now, personally, I have been using Skillshare for quite some time. I was already a Skillshare member before they reached out to ask me if I would do sponsored videos from them. So I'm a firm believer in their product. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives, and it is a great place to take the next step in your creative journey. They have classes in things like graphic design, illustration, photography, various crafts, including a few classes on blacksmithing. Now, personally, I'm mostly interested in classes on video production, product photography, editing videos, things like that. Currently, I'm taking a class with Maddie Brown on filming scene transitions. I think a lot of people describe my style as like... Try all these different things and just gonna compile them into like a really cool piece and just show Now, this off. class probably doesn't have much applicable to what I do here on Black Bear Forge, but you may already know that I have another channel, John Switzer, where I do more personal videos, talk about what we do around here on this piece of property, our travels, things like that. And I try to use that as a place to experiment with different video styles and techniques and different equipment. And it's really a whole lot of fun. I really enjoy doing that. I never thought I was gonna get into it that deeply when I started doing blacksmithing videos. But thanks to Skillshare, I'm learning a lot and having a lot of fun making those other videos. So personally, I'm sure I will be using Skillshare for quite some time in the future. And for the first 1,000 viewers that use the link in the video description, you can receive a free month of Skillshare. So I strongly encourage you to check that out. Now let's get back to work on our project. Also helps you stand up. I think the shank or tang portion on this spike is a little bit too big. So I'm going to create a shoulder to let it shoulder up on the bottom of the handle. I'm just going to go ahead and do all that at the grinder.
I went ahead and got these parts hot in the toaster oven. And that way I can put a little bit of wax on them before I assemble everything because I'm certainly not going to heat them up to melt wax after they're all on the handle. That means it's time to address ourselves to the handle. Now there were lots of suggestions in the last video about what to use for a handle. Walnut, cherry, black locust, hickory, ash, white oak, all sorts of ideas. Few people even offered to send stuff. And while that would be great, there wasn't enough time for me to wait for things to get shipped. So I ended up ordering something online. Unfortunately, good handlewood just doesn't really exist around here. We have lots of pine and fir and brushy oak that might be strong enough, but you don't find a piece long enough, straight enough, and without some sort of funky grain pattern in it that makes it unusable for a handle. Now, many times in the past, I have ordered hickory and ash and Osage orange online and hoped for good handle material. That's about 50-50, depending on the material. But I ended up doing what I have done so many times in the past. I just ordered a handle that I think I can get this handle out of. I'll reshape it. This is just a three-foot sledgehammer handle from McMaster Carr. Always seems like a silly way to order a handle that I'm not going to use the way it comes. But it is a nice straight piece of hickory, and it's about the right length. I wouldn't have minded it maybe a hair longer by the time we do some work to this. And it looks like it may just fit the ferrule. This may be a little bit large. We'll have to look at that. May have to forge that again. And the head just almost fits perfectly. So I think this is going to work out just fine. Anyways, we need to find out if this is going to work. So let's head to the basement wood shop and see if we can make this handle fit into something usable. Like I say, this head just almost fits. There's a little bit of a gap front to back, which is ideal because we need to try and get these straps in there. But I think the first thing I have to do is create a flat plane across here so the straps have something to lay on. So I think I'll just do that with a hand plane. That should be quick and easy. Okay, I think that's going to fit on there on that end, so I'm going to work on the ferrule end and get that all cut in before I actually mount the head. And the tang on this fits much better since I cut it down to a smaller size. It's about 3 8 diameter instead of the uh, half inch diameter. So I think that'll work well. Thank <laughs> you. 
I want to put a little shoulder on this so that the ferrule is flush with the outside of the handle, or as close as I can come. I think width-wise I might be a little bit large, but on the flat part of the oval I think I can manage this. I just hope this works the way I've envisioned it. You say I've never done anything quite like this before. The strap should go on there like that. So far that's working very well. Now to drill the holes for these rivets that will hold the straps in place, I have a lathe center I borrowed from the woodworking lathe and it's set up right under the bright size drill bit, but it does not quite touch so I don't drill all the way through. I can put that in the hole in the strap and that guarantees that my hole is going to go from one strap to the other even if it isn't perfectly square. Now this ferrule that I made for this is just a little bit too wide for the shaft and there's just a little gap there and I think that's not going to look very good. So I went up to the shop and I made another one. This one is going to fit much better and it's going to be a little bit of a drive-in fit so it's going to fit good and tight. But I'm still going to go ahead and epoxy that on there and epoxy the spike in to make sure this stuff doesn't ever fall out. So before I do that, I'm going to wrap it all up with some blue tape just so I don't get epoxy all over it. Yeah, I'm going to let that epoxy cure and then tomorrow I will do a little bit of last cleanup on the wood, maybe put some oil or stain on it, and then we get to see how well it works. 24 hours later and the dries to the touch in 35 minutes, fully cured in two hours epoxy, is still tacky, but I think it's probably not going to move any, so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can clean this up. The wood's a little bit proud of the metal right here, and the metal's a little bit proud of the wood over there, but I think it's close enough that I can file this down and not file all the way through it. Probably not going to get too carried away, so that may still have a teeny tiny lip right there. But we'll find out.
There was quite a bit of discussion after the last video about what the final finish for this project should be. Some people thought just leave it black and wax it. Of course, that's what I typically do anyways, is just wax everything. Some people thought it should be taken to a high shine, and about an equal number of people thought I should just wire brush it. So that seems to be the compromise. Of course, there were those that thought it should be blued, brown, treated various other ways. So I think splitting the difference between black and polished, and just going after it with a scotch bright belt, so it has a few little highlights, gives a little bit of an antique look, is the way we're gonna go. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna put a final edge on it, and this project should be complete. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video.